What is the multiplication rule of probability? That's what we'll be going over in today's Wrath of Math lesson. Before you watch the rest of this lesson, I'd recommend watching my video on conditional probability, because we'll be talking about conditional probability in this lesson. Now let's check out our first example that will introduce us to the multiplication rule. Two coins are flipped. What is the probability that they both land heads up? We'll name some events here. We'll say that A is the event that the first coin lands heads up, and B is the event that the second coin lands heads up. We're trying to find the probability that they both land heads up, which is the probability of A and B, which you might also see written as the probability of A intersect B. So what is this probability? Well, there's a good chance that you've solved a problem like this before. You might be thinking, the probability that the first coin lands heads up, the probability of A, is just one half. And the probability that the second coin lands heads up, the probability of B, is also one half. So to find the probability that both A and B occur, we just have to multiply their individual probabilities. The probability of A times the probability of B which is one-half times one-half, which is one-fourth. And that is exactly correct. And this works because these two events are independent, which means that either one of them occurring doesn't affect the probability of the other one occurring. If the first coin lands heads up, that doesn't change how likely the second coin is to land heads up. So to find the probability that they both occur, we just multiply their individual probabilities together. And this is a special case of the multiplication rule. And here is the statement of that special case. If A and B are independent events in the same sample space, then the probability of A intersect B is equal to the probability of A times the probability of B. And again, remember that events are independent if the occurrence of one doesn't affect the probability of the other. But of course, two events are not always independent. So let's check out another example. Two cards are drawn from a standard 52 card deck without replacement. What is the probability that both cards are red? Let's go ahead and name some events. A is the event that the first card is red, and B is the event that the second card is red. We're trying to find the probability of A and B occurring, the probability that both cards are red. For starters, what is the probability of A? Well, there are 26 red cards, and there are 52 cards total, all equally likely to be drawn. So the probability of A is 26 over 52. The more difficult question is this. What is the probability of B? This is more difficult because we're not dealing with independent events anymore. The probability of B depends on whether or not A occurred. To make that clear, we know that the probability of B can't just be equal to 26 over 52 like A is, because there are no longer 52 cards in the deck, since the first card was already drawn without replacement, which means it wasn't put back in. So now there are 51 cards in the deck. To complicate things further, we don't know how many red cards are in the deck. There could be 26, but the first card might have been red, which would mean there are now 25 red cards in the deck. To actually find the probability of B, we would need to use what's called the law of total probability. That's a super handy law, and I have a video on it, so I encourage you to check that out. But for our purposes today, we don't actually need to find the probability of B. Since we're trying to find the probability of A and B, we can assume that A has already occurred. So while it might not be obvious what the probability of B is, what is more obvious is the probability of B given that A has already occurred. And that's what this notation means. This is a conditional probability. It's the probability of B given the condition, which is what that vertical bar means, the condition that A has already occurred, that the first drawn card is red. And what is this probability? Well, since the first card was red, we know that there are now 25 red cards and 51 cards total. Then the probability of A and B both occurring is just the probability of A multiplied by the probability of B 
given that a has occurred. It's the product of these two numbers. So that is 26 over 52 multiplied by 25 over 51, which is approximately 24.5%. So we can see how two events being dependent makes finding the probability of both of them occurring a little bit different than the previous example. And again, this is because with dependent events, the occurrence of one affects the probability of the other. So let's check out this statement of the multiplication rule, which is more general. If A and B are events in the same sample space, then the probability of A and B is equal to the probability of B multiplied by the probability of A given B. And this is also equal to the probability of A multiplied by the probability of B given A. And if you're familiar with conditional probability, you might notice that this formula follows directly from the definition of conditional probability. If you're not already familiar with conditional probability, notice that we could solve this formula for the conditional probability. So you might want to try that and see what you get. So both of these expressions work to find the probability of A intersect B, but depending on what your events are, it might make more sense to use one of these than the other. For example, in our previous problem, it makes a lot more sense to assume that A has already occurred since A happens before B. And it's important to note as well that this formula works just fine when the two events are independent as well. If A and B are independent events, then the probability of A given B is just the probability of A. Similarly, the probability of B given A would just be equal to the probability of B. So if A and B were independent events, then this formula would just reduce to the formula that we talked about above. So that is the multiplication rule of probability. It tells us how to find the probability of the intersection of events by multiplying some probabilities together, which of course is how it gets its name. And before we go, I'd just like to leave you with an example to try on your own. A jar contains seven red balls and 10 green balls. Two balls are randomly selected without replacement. What is the probability that one ball is red and one is green? This example is going to work very similarly to the one that we just did. It's just a little more complicated though, because there's two ways this could happen. We could have the first ball be red and the second ball be green, or we could have the first ball be green and the second ball be red. So you'll have to account for both of those possibilities. Let me know what you get down in the comments, and I'll leave the solution in the description. So I hope this video helped you understand the multiplication rule. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions, need anything clarified, or have any other video requests. Thank you very much for watching, I'll see you next time, and be sure to subscribe for the swankiest math lessons on the internet. And a big thanks to Valo, who, upon my request, kindly gave me permission to use his music in my math lessons. Link to his music in the description. Blind as bats, it's a sight to see. Choirs in four-part decisions.